On this episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud, we're going to discuss the National Institutes of Standard and Technology model for cloud computing. So, in about 2010, the federal government started to procure more and more cloud service, and one of the problems was that there was no good definition for that. The National Institutes for Standard and Technology in the U.S. actually took on the, the, the task of trying to put a description together and came up with a very simple little model um, in, in all its about two pages of documentation. And there's more that has come on since then, but the, the core two pages, I think, really describe cloud in a very efficient and consistent fashion. So first off, they said that there really are th sort of three major buckets of description when you try to describe what a cloud is. The first of which is the set of essential characteristics, effectively what makes a cloud a cloud. Um, the second is a set of service descriptions, so that there are some consistent ways of describing the kinds of services that a cloud is trying to offer. And the third is the deployment models. How is somebody actually getting access to uh, a deployed cloud environment? If we start with the essential characteristics, what we're really looking at are five key things. We're looking at on-demand self-service activity uh, or activation of the services. We're looking at broad network access. Without that, you really don't have a cloud. Um, we're looking at something that you can meter. Can I actually determine how much of this service I'm using or how much I've returned back into the pool? Uh, that leads us to the concept of pooled resources. Can I actually get more than what I might consume at any one point in time so that others can share, and when I return, I return it back to a pool that others can then consume from? And lastly, there's the concept of elasticity. Uh, many services in the past have been available in some form of semi-on-demand fashion, but haven't really been elastic. There's no way to return a service that I've consumed. So this is another major change within the space. Uh, of all these characteristics, I think the one that is most important is this concept of on-demand, because on-demand is what enables cloud, what really uh, enables us to have this elasticity and get access to services over the network and be metered against them so I know how much I've consumed. The next area that the national government looked at or that the NIST model looked at was this concept of uh, the, the different services profiles, basically the, the service descriptions. Uh, we have three key ones that they came up with, infrastructure, software, and platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service to me is the easiest one to understand, especially if you've ever seen a data center or worked in a data center or consumed resources in a data center. Um, we're talking about the compute resources, the network resources, and the storage resources. Some people will lump in some other services into that as well, and they'll say, well, you know, a database is a classic data center service. Uh, that's part of our infrastructure. That's fine. The actual description never goes into the details of the exact components of the as a service offerings. It just looks at some of the different pieces and how they fit together. The intermediate one, the next step up from that, the more abstracted version is this concept of platform as a service. So rather than thinking of compute or network or storage components, I think about the capability of compute. So I don't think about the computer, I think about the fact that something has to process my application in order to make it useful. Um, or I need to have services like a messaging service that I can actually have multiple of my application components talk to without necessarily having to manage that service. That's the platform aspect. And lastly, there's software as a service. This is the one that usually is fairly straightforward. It's things like an application engine, uh, a customer resource management tool set, uh, a, a collaboration engine, something that I can actually use as software to collaborate with multiple peers. It's an entire solution all bundled together. And I can add users or remove them or add data storage or remove it as needed by my cloud application. That's the on-demand elastic aspect. So that's software as a service. Uh, and lastly, then there are the deployment models. How do I actually get access to this? And it, it was very specific in the document that it was not how do I build it, where does it sit, or anything of that nature. It was more how do I gain access to it. And the description definition really came from the aspect of public versus private, really more than anything else. There are two other models as well. There's a concept of a hybrid, something that's public and private, but managed through, or rather accessed through a single interface. So as an end user, I might get public resources or private access resources, but I don't really care or necessarily know. Um, there's also this concept of community uh, where there's effectively a private do domain, but it's a larger group of potentially different enterprises or different entities that get access to the community. And then you had public and private. These are the ones that most people talk about when they talk about cloud. Public cloud being very much what I think we usually think of as today. It's a cloud resource 
that's available to just about anybody. Now, public could still be public within the concept of a security domain. For example, it's public, but only US federal government employees have access to it. Although in reality, based on the NIST model, that would really fall into the concept of a community cloud, the community being the community of the US federal government. Um, so you have the public concept, anybody technically should be able to get access to it. Private concept, only a very specific entity or group can get access to it. Community, a larger group, potentially multiple entities, multiple different organizations can get access to it. And then a hybrid, which is some mix of the of the, these different resources, but providing or but but being accessed through a single interface model. So that gives us the overall description. Again, a set of essential characteristics, on demand, elastic pooled resource that is uh, accessible via broad network access and has the ability to be metered. Um, we have the service models, software, platform, and infrastructure services. And then we have the deployment models, uh, 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 public, private, hybrid, and community. And again, with those core concepts, those, those basic concepts, we can describe just about any cloud class service that somebody could come up with. Now, there might even still be a little bit of argument back and forth, oh, this is more hybrid than it is public or private or something along those lines. Uh, and people talk about virtual private versus public. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of descriptions that sort of further stretch the limits of, of this model. But this basic model gives us the core concepts that we can use when we want to describe cloud. This has been Robert Starmer, bringing you five minutes of cloud. Thanks for watching. This was Robert Starmer bringing you Five Minutes of Cloud. Five Minutes of Cloud is brought to you by Chemos Technologies, the company I actually work for. Uh, and we really appreciate the fact that you actually attended and watched this, this little segment. Um, we obviously have a YouTube channel here, so please subscribe to that. Uh, we have Twitter. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Yeah, I, I do actually find some interesting things to say on Twitter once in a while. Um, and on top of that, we have a mailing list. Uh, if you subscribe to the mailing list, we have a, a free report, basically five pitfalls of cloud that you can avoid uh, if you get my report. So uh, why don't you hop on over to our website, uh, sign up for the mailing list. You'll get that report delivered to your inbox uh, shortly after signing up. And I think that's also another very interesting and important read. Thanks so much again for watching.